Good morning to everyone and uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Anant and uh, this is going to be a short session on thermal and thermomechanical uh, with the latest product uh, which is called uh, on again salt. Let's start with the agenda uh, for what we're going to talk about, what we're going to cover uh, today. A brief overview slide uh, and then we'll skip on to a live demo and the rest of the four sections will be live. We'll talk about the on-ship integration that we have uh, with on salt. Uh, we will cover the thermal and thermomechanical motor conditions that are available at on scale salt. Uh, we'll do a simple parametric analysis and then we will look at some post-processing uh, capabilities on the salt. And all that will be live uh, before we jump to the live session. Uh, just a brief introduction about on scale salt for uh, those of you uh, seeing this or hearing this uh, for the first time. Uh, on scale is a cloud engineering simulation platform. Uh, we are more than a tool, and uh, what we want to do and what we provide uh, are the following. So, first, uh, we, are massive, we have a massively scalable multi physics uh, solvers through an FEA and CFD uh, solvers. FEA is already in production currently and CFDA is coming up uh, very, very soon. That we are not putting that internally and we hope to release that uh, very soon. Uh, the second more important aspect of one scale is our cloud supercomputers. Uh, we have cloud HPCs uh, powered by both AWS and GCP, Amazon Web Services and uh, Google Cloud. So we are cloud agnostic uh, and we provide, it provides a certain level of redundancy on our software and it also gives users a uh, certain flexibility to choose a cloud provider if they have a preference. Uh, and third, which is super critical uh, on scale, is uh, easy to use workflows. Uh, when we set out to build on scale so we wanted to make sure uh, that the tool is ex extremely easy and one of the core missions of on scale is to democratize uh, access cutting edge solvers on the cloud and we can only do that if the workflow is super easy and this is super different from all the other tools available in the market. Uh, so we focus extremely on making the tools extremely accessible uh, and for that, to that end, we have built a simple web GUI which I'll be demonstrating uh, after the slide. And for advanced users, uh, we have seen API and if you're interested in that, I'll highly recommend you to uh, check the documentation uh, for Sim API, which is our API to our followers on the cloud. And the fourth interesting aspect about our platform is our cloud or SaaS business model. Uh, again, this is a 21st century uh, company built in the 21st century, so we uh, adopted through the cloud and the SaaS business model to the CAE community. And if anything, the last few months uh, have been incredibly tough on everyone and it's proven uh, the cloud adoption is the way to go and on scale is at the leading edge of that adoption. And then finally, the on shape integration. With on scale and on shape, uh, you have a 100% web CAD and simulation uh, workflow. And over the course of the next few months, you will see uh, more tighter integration uh, with on shape. And the integration that we have currently uh, is already good enough, and I'll show you uh, with a light, uh, light demonstration. With that said, uh, I don't have any slides and we will jump over to the live demo. Alright, so this is uh, on scale solved. Uh, I have a few different projects that I've created and solved, uh, but I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call that project uh, webinar. I'm going to call it a live demo of a simple model. So, like I said, uh, when we instead of the build uh, on scale solve, we wanted to keep it extremely easy and extremely intuitive. So, as soon as you create a first project, uh, you have this nice sort of quick guide on the right side, which sort of uh, tells you uh, or informs you how to import CAD shapes. Uh, this button here brings allows you to bring in CAD files and. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to bring in a CAD uh, from OnShape. So I've logged into my OnShape account and I see a list of recent documents on my OnShape account. 
and I'm going to use the PCB uh, thermal tutorial model uh, for the case of the demo and I'm going to import the assembly. As soon as I hit import it comes in, it gives me a nice little preview of the file that's coming in and I'm going to click on uh, import. And since it's a live demo it's going to take a couple of seconds uh, to import this cat file uh, and just a little skipping. Uh, and if you have questions, please uh, continue to type it in and I'll be looking over the chat window and any pertinent aspects of the software that can come along, I'll be uh, on the lookout for address that. Of course, you're going to have a Q&A after the, uh, after the session. So, the, the model came in and as soon as it comes in, it get a nice information about the importing box of the model. And the on confirm, it comes in, boom, ready to go. Uh, well, first thing you'll notice is all the path names uh, that I had in one shape have been changed. Uh, and like I said, uh, this is our version one of our uh, on scale solve. This is the first uh, uh, webinar that we are doing on the thermal analysis. As we progress and as we build, uh, build it out, you'll see a much tighter closer uh, integration with on shape. Uh, and again, one of the first things that you'll notice is uh, we try to retain the path selection in the same way that on one ask uh, so there's no confusion between the two different tools and also in the future uh, we will enable uh, user customizable uh, clicks so now I'm going to select multi-select all these different guys or on top of the board uh, and I'm going to assign materials to them uh, and I'm going to assign silicon we have a few different uh, materials available in our library uh, and of course you can create your own, uh, but for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to go with whatever uh, that is pre-built into our library. Uh, so now that I've assigned uh, silicon to all the different components uh, or parts on top of this uh, printed circuit board, uh, I will select the printed circuit board cell and assign glass. I'm going to use a glass substrate uh, for this demo. And then I will select the tin, which is the thermal interface material. Uh, and I'm going to assign a thermal grease uh, which acts as the interface between the heat sink and the main component and the heat sink of course is going to be uh, aluminum. Right, so now we have assigned all the different uh, materials to all different parts and this help window on the right uh, this is sort of a useful indicator uh, to see at what stage uh, you are in the process of model building. So we create a new project, uh, we import a CAD and we assign the materials uh, and now we are going to, uh, next we have to assign physics. And physics is a particular drop that toggles you to the physics section. Uh, and by default, uh, we have the mechanical uh, physics enabled for structural analysis. Uh, so we're going to disable that for now and we're going to look at uh, the thermal physics that we have. So as soon as I toggle the thermal physics on, uh, I get a new set of options uh, that provides me with all the uh, options for the different thermal loads that we have. Um, so, for this demo, I'm going to use power as the first boundary condition. And as soon as I select power, I get an option to further and I'm able to select the part and assign the value to it. And it shows that main chip here or this component under the heat sink. And I'm going to assign a total power and the volumetric power that I'm assigning uh, and volumetric heat source that I'm assigning. And the total power is going to be 20 watts. Right, so now we have all these little guys and I want to take power again to those guys and I can select power and I can do a simple uh, multi-select like this. And all I have to do is just point and click and it shows all the different parts that I've selected and I'm going to assign a generic uh, point one one. In fact, I'm going to delete this guy uh, or this guy and I'm going to assign point one to all the other, all of them. And for this guy, I'm going to assign a heat flux which is a 2D heat source uh, on, on the top surface and I'm going to give him 500 per uh, meter square. So now we have uh, two power definitions, one assigned to a single part and the second power that is assigned to the three parts and a heat flux uh, that is assigned to this part. Uh, again, if you look at this help window now, still, you don't still get a check mark for it because all we have done all I have done so far uh, is assign power 
and I think he trusts to my model, no, I need to attain a key thing, and I'm going to attain the convection, uh, which has as the way to remove heat from the system uh, directly to the heat sink. And you'll notice that as soon as I've selected any physics type, the model tree switches to the parts and the, uh, the model, the assembly tree and the parts tree. And what I want to do for this model is assign uh, convection coefficient uh, to the pins of the heat sink. And I'm making an assumption here that all the heat is going to be transferred only through this uh, pins of the heat sink and not anywhere else. So for that, I'm going to have to select all the faces and expand heat sink and I get a nice uh, detail about all the different faces in this heat sink. So I'm going to select phase 6 all the way down to phase 47. I'm going to hold down shift. I'll select all of them. Done. Oops, I didn't enter the value. Uh, I'm going to assign, say, 15 watts per meter squared degree Celsius. Done. Assign the convection coefficient and the power. So now we are ready to go. Now you can see I get all the check marks here, which means the model is set up completely. It's perfectly set up. And again, this is one of the features of on the install in that uh, we do not allow users to run a model that is not correctly set up. So we make sure that the all the right inputs are set before or uh, even go to the simulator uh, section. And the simulator section is where uh, you mesh and estimate. And mesh and estimate are uh, sort of unique uh, to, uh, to on scale. And again, this is a live demo. So this is going to take 60 to 90 seconds uh, to generate the mesh. And briefly, I'll just talk about the mesh. Uh, you look at the geometry and all the care from the user's perspective is uh, valid CAD, uh, right set of inputs, which we of course make sure uh, with a set of guard rails that we have put in the product. And once we have those two information, uh, that's enough for us to generate the mesh automatically and we don't uh, require the users to do anything else. And we analyze the geometry, uh, generate a set of meshes, as you can see on the right, uh, generating the two different meshes. Uh, and once the process is done, we give you an estimate. While this is going, I just want to quickly uh, touch upon the other uh, important feature of uh, on-scale solve, which is our dashboards. Uh, everything that we do is in the modular uh, section, and everything we have done so far is in the modular section, and that's where I'm generating the mesh. Uh, the dashboard is, uh, is a nice area where you can look at the model uh, that you have previously run. You can look at all the different project studies uh, that you have run previously uh, and you can click on a certain study and you can see all the different simulations uh, that you have run in that study and if you want to load the results, you can directly load the results from the dashboard. And this dashboard has got a quite a little, uh, lot of other features. For example, uh, if you do have a team account, you can add uh, collaborators, project collaborators, uh, and assign different ownership depending on structure of your team. So there's all sorts of these different uh, management capabilities that exist in the dashboard. And in fact, we will do a separate webinar on all that different uh, workflow uh, features that we have in on skill solve. Uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about this briefly as the other uh, the meshing takes place. And now if I come back here, uh, the estimate is done. So this is the model that I just estimated. It tells me that it's going to take a minute and 36 seconds and going to co need to cost me 1.04 core hours. I'm going to increase it a little bit and I'm going to click on run. And as soon as I click on run, uh, it starts running these models. Uh, it first queues the study, it launches the computer, simulates and prepares the results. Why this is happening? Uh, I want to set up another study. Another very important feature uh, that is super uh, to on scale and and how and unique in terms of the feature itself and how we enable for it for users to uh, run it. So the first power that I assigned to the main ship, uh, I assigned it 20 watts and often uh, the heat source is not even constant and you're going to have a, a variety of heat sources that you might want to simulate. So instead of setting each of those models up with all the different values for your heat load, uh, you can do a simple parametric analysis can vary, vary the value parametrically, and you can run all of them at the same time. Uh, so 
I'm going to do a simple uh, parameter allocation. I'm going to do a linear sweep. I'm going to start with 20 value, which is uh, 20, 20 watts, which is the baseline uh, analysis. I'm going to increase it to 100, and I'm going to give a five interval of five intervals. So what this is going to do is it's going to run five different uh, simulations uh, with five values between 20 to 100, increasing on the order, and that's what the linear sweep uh, dictates. In the future, we will also enable a CSV import, or you can also take advantage of the geometric speed. So this parametric analysis is super unique to Onscape, uh, and it's extremely easy to set up. So I just set five different values for this guy, and I'm going to click on Done. So you can see, when I click on the power one, it shows that I applied it to the chip, and it also shows that parameter one. You can't see the values anymore. And if you want to look at parameter, go to the simulator, uh, section, you can see under the parameters, a new guy popped up, and you can see uh, the star value is 20, 100, number of values is 5. And now, if I go to the estimate section, I see there is one physics, one parameter, but five simulations. And this is because I've set up five, uh, five different values. So I'm going to click on estimate, and hopefully uh, this estimate uh, won't take that long, because this is the same model uh, that I previously estimated and it should take a uh, significantly uh, shorter time. So there we go. It took significantly shorter time this time uh, because it's the same model. Uh, and I can click Run. And before I click Run, I want to, uh, for curious folks, if you're interested in the mesh that OnScale generated, you can expand the mesh option and you can see the mesh. If you click on View Mesh, it shows. And again, this is a beautiful mesh. Uh, that is automatically uh, generated uh, with no inputs regarding the meshing from the user. Another cool feature is uh, you can choose uh, the different levels of mesh density that you want in your model, so from very coarse to very fine, depending on uh, what you want. And by default, uh, you can use the medium. Again, it is not a prerequisite for any user to look at this or do any of the uh, stuff related to the mesh. Uh, we do it automatically on the uh, and if I change the mesh density, of course, the estimate is going to change uh, because the total number of elements is going to change. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead with the medium uh, mesh shedding. So I'm going to click on Run, and now it's going to run all the five models at the same time. And before this runs, uh, as it sets up to run, uh, I will open the results of the model that I just ran. The model results. And this is the previous model uh, set up. Uh, again, while this is loading, uh, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, post to get uh, and in the chat window. Uh, right, so the result opened. Uh, this is a simple uh, analysis that we ran, and if you are not sure of what analysis you ran, you can expand the physics, uh, and it will show uh, what are the different uh, boundary conditions and loads uh, that you use for this uh, common analysis. And by default, we output uh, temperature and you can uh, uh, change the legends if you want to hide the mesh, you can hide the mesh, uh, or if you want to have a slice through different sections, uh, for example, if you want to slice through uh, the X direction and I want to look at, say, cut through the heat sink, I can just do like this. If I want to slide in the Y direction, I can just slide this over and it's going to slide through the Y direction, or if I want to do the Z, I'm going to do the Z section. Uh, so these are some of the basic uh, post-processing features that we have at this moment. Again, like I said, this is the first webinar that we are doing on thermal analysis, and uh, over time, we'll be adding more and more uh, post-processing capabilities. And all the interesting uh, post-processing capabilities that we have uh, is the Jupyter, uh, integrated Jupyter notebook that we have. And for advanced users, if you're interested in your own post-processing, and if you are running complex workflows, uh, you can take advantage of our uh, notebook. And we have a couple of examples already, uh, a couple of scripts uh, that you can use as a starting point. And I will not go uh, over them in a lot of detail, uh, but brief, briefly, uh, if you want to do a simple XY plot, uh, what you can do is, uh, because it's a Python-based plane, you can you have a lot of 
or a lot of Python libraries that you can uh, input. So what you can do is you can download the files that we have uh, and give it in the VTU format. Uh, you can extract the results you want, uh, and then you can have your own sort of uh, post-processing capability. And because it's Python-based, uh, there are a lot of libraries uh, that, are available, that are available uh, that users can take advantage of, and we offer that uh, for free to all uh, all users who sign up for uh, OnCable. And we will do a separate uh, session on the Jupyter Notebook later. And this is, again, uh, there's an extensive documentation about that in our, in our, on our website. For folks who are interested in it, uh, please feel free to check that out. Uh, so let's go back to the other study that I just started. Uh, so the first study uh, just completed, and that's the first that we saw. The second study where uh, I set up parametrize the power load of this model from 20 watts to 100 watts, uh, and actually uh, mimicking a power consumption of chip from 20% to 100%. Uh, so it's got all the five simulations um, that ran in parallel and it's ready to go. Again, uh, like I said, the running parametric analysis is super important to us and it's super unique to on scale. And this, uh, we believe, is the huge step change that we offer uh, to the market and anything else that is available. Over the course of this demo, we were able to run six models and five of them in parallel simultaneously. Uh, and again, there's no limit to that. I just chose five, but you can run as many uh, more than you want. Now, once you run a parametric analysis, you will have a new uh, output on the right that shows the different uh, simulations that you ran and the, uh, and the corresponding uh, parameter uh, that you used. Uh, and all the other push processing features uh, that I talked about are available. Uh, and I want to briefly uh, spend some time uh, in talking about the thermomechanical uh, analysis and also another capability that we have. Uh, so I'll go back to the modeler. It's the same model that I'm operating off of. And this time, instead of a piece, I want to use uh, my own. Uh, but instead of setting up my own, I'm just going to assign another random uh, material from a library. But you'll see that as soon as I change the material for a particular model, the software automatically creates a new version. And this new version will have the new material that I assigned uh, to this part 10. And that is separate from anything else. And it also opens it on a new tab. So I'm going to close this tab. This is the tab that we were working on before. Uh, and it shows it's version 1. And you see this is in version 2. So as soon as I change a material or the CAD geometry, the software automatically a new version, so this way uh, it keeps it helps managing the files and the clutter that you know complex models tend to create. Uh, we help you manage it uh, intelligently. So change the materials uh, to a material from another material from a library, uh, and this time I want to run a thermomechanical uh, analysis. So I'm going to enable mechanical physics, and again uh, we already did a webinar, uh, a detailed webinar on all the different mechanical boundary conditions have for structural analysis, uh, and I highly recommend folks to check that out if you're interested in our structural capabilities. Uh, but for this webinar, uh, what I want to do is assign a restraint. The restraint basically fixes uh, one of the faces. I'm going to restrain the, uh, this face here, and point it click, and it shows face 61, and it's restrained in x, y, at z direction. I'm going to click done. And all the movement of the phases uh, is restrained. And I'm going to click on power again. You'll notice that it also carried the parameter uh, that we previously attached to it. Uh, so you can either choose to run uh, the entire analysis again. I'm going to run the entire analysis. Or you can change the value and run just a simple model. Uh, so I'm going to go to the simulator. And now you see uh, that we have two physics, one parameters, and uh, five simulations. So I'm going to mesh and estimate. And again, it's going to go through the same uh, meshing process, uh, and it's going to give me uh, a new estimate uh, for this house. I see that a few folks have answered are some questions already. I'll, I'll get to it uh, in, in, in a moment as soon as this is um, generating impact. I can get to it right now. Uh, first, one of the questions is from Pavel uh, Krovsky uh, asked about uh, 
convection coefficient, how do you know that convection coefficient uh, can show heat flux and uh, ambient temperature? So by default, we have an ambient temperature. Uh, again, for the purpose of this demo, I just used the same ambient temperature. Uh, it is under thermal environment, and of course, you can uh, edit that temperature. Uh, and for heat flux, uh, heat flux is a, just a 2D heat source uh, for us, and there are two different ways you can assign heat flux uh, to a pod. Uh, you can assign either a heat flux, watts per meter squared, or you can assign it as a total heat, uh, which is assigned as a, uh, a value as watts uh, over the entire 2D surface uh, that you select. Uh, so a few other questions, I'll, I'll get to it, and I just want to uh, see the estimate of uh, this guy. Uh, 
other uh, coupling of other physics, that electromechanical coupling, for example, uh, that should also be available too. But thermomechanical is already available. And if you are trying to looking to simulate a uh, uh, laser uh, source into some stress problem, uh, you should be able to assign the voltage conditions uh, at the moment. I think we are the two more questions, and we will get back to you guys uh, separately. Uh, but we're coming to the end of the uh, end, end of the session. I wouldn't want to take uh, any more of your time. Again, thank you very much to everyone uh, who did this. And we hope to have a lot more of these webinars uh, in the future, uh, short ones, and we'll go and specifically cater to the people who are generally interested to see. Uh, again, thank you very much uh, for tuning in today.